Bicycles are amazing that you can balance them. Somehow you, you, you just on two narrow wheels, you can keep them upright. And you can only keep them upright when they're moving. And what's well known about bicycle balance is that the, the major effect in bicycle balance is that steering is what gives you balance. If you lock the uh, wheels of a bicycle so it can't steer, uh, this, the anger momentum of the wheels contributes exactly nothing to bicycle stability. And, it's, and it falls over when, the when, the, when it's moving forwards exactly the same way it falls over when it's um, stationary. The amazing thing about bicycles is that they can balance themselves, that somehow a bicycle, if it's moving uh, fast enough and not too fast, will steer itself and, and, uh, and balance. And I balance this, and I can balance this with my hands. And the basic mechanism of the balance, if you want to think about it, is that when it, sti when it tips this way, I move my hand back under this way. When it tips this way, I move my hand back under this way. And this is the basic uh, mechanism for bicycle balance. So if you think of a bicycle rolling along, and it's falling this way, the way that a bicycle balances is that you steer it. And the steering doesn't do anything if a bicycle is not moving. But if a bicycle is moving forwards, when you steer it, it moves the, the, bot, the wheel sideways. And the net effect is, I'll, I'll aim this at the camera, is if the bicycle is leaning this way and you steer it, it pops the wheels underneath the, the, the top of the bicycle. So it's as if I'm balancing the bicycle on my hand. And when the bicycle leans this way, you steering it brings the wheels back underneath steer it this way, it feels it brings back underneath. Now the natural thing to think of is that it's something about a gyroscope. So that you know that when things spin fast, they, uh, they somehow are, are rigid because they're spinning. So here's a kid's gyroscope. And when it's spinning, think of it as a bicycle wheel spinning, uh, it has a tendency to keep its alignment. So for example, if it can balance. And you'd naturally think that a bicycle is stable because of the spinning. And as I said, what we showed is that when you tied the handlebars and don't let it steer, this gyroscopic effect doesn't give um, any stability. So what is it about the moving that gives us stability is that this spinning gyroscope has this sort of squirrely aspect, which you can feel when you hold a, a gyroscope. It, it's not just that it wants to keep its alignment. It's that when you try to turn it one way, uh, the effect is to turn a different direction. And the net effect of that is that for a bicycle wheel, if a bicycle wheel is spinning, so imagine this bicycle wheel is spinning like so, that when the bicycle tips to one side, this wheel acts like a gyroscope, and the net effect of this tipping is that it causes a steering. And then the result of that steering is that the bottom moves to the side, and the, and the, and the bottom and the wheels are brought back under the bicycle. So, so that's one of the explanations for how bicycles can be self-stable. It's a gyroscopic effect. The other claim about bicycle self-stability, how they can balance themselves, has to do with the caster. So this is a caster. And what a caster is, this is a wheel. But the wheel itself is mounted on something which has a, another axis. So where you see these, for example, is in the front wheels of grocery carts and in, um, on the bottoms of chairs and things like that. The job of this caster is that if you have some piece of furniture or grocery cart and it moves in one direction, the wheel follows around it, however you roll it. Now if you look at this thing, a bicycle in disguise is, is itself a caster because here we have a bearing for steering and here we have a wheel which rolls on an axle. If you look at the bicycle, it's got this bearing for steering and a wheel that rolls on an axle. It's got, it's got different size to it. Now this effect that the caster has, that it follows whichever way you, you move it, the reason it follows is because this wheel contact point is behind this pivoting or steering axis. And on a bicycle, this is a subtle bit of the geometry, but if you look at this steering axis, it comes down in a line like this, and it hits the floor about here, just under here whereas the wheel contact is back here. So the calculations showed that neither gyroscopic or trail effects were important, and then Jim Papadopoulos designed on pencil and paper a bicycle uh, that did not have these effects. Uh, I then gave the challenge to my friend Arne Schwab in the Netherlands, and he with his student Jody Koyman 
uh, built a, uh, one of these TMS, two mass gate bicycles. So what it is, it's a, it's a funny looking thing that looks maybe more like a scooter, uh, but the idea is that it has no gyroscopic effect, no spin angular momentum effect because it has two front wheels and two back wheels. The second front wheel doesn't touch the ground, it just spins backwards to cancel the angular momentum, and the second back wheel spins backwards to cancel the angular momentum. And it doesn't have this caster effect because it has the uh, ground contact point actually slightly forward of the steering axis instead of behind the steering axis as in a conventional bicycle. And they pushed it and uh, it would balance itself and they knock it sideways a little bit and it would pop back upright just like the calculation said it should do. Is it has to be that somehow leaning causes steering. But there are various mechanical effects besides the gyroscopic effect and besides the caster effect where leaning can cause steering. And the mechanism that that bicycle has for being self-stable is that it has a mass in the front assembly which is forward of the steering axis and it has a mass in the frame and when the bicycle falls this one tends to fall faster just like if a stick falls, and the stick is shorter, it falls faster than a longer stick. So this front mass falls faster than the rear mass, but they're connected to each other by the steering axis, so in its attempt to fall faster, it causes steering. And that's what we think is the primary mechanism of stability of this TMS, uh, this gyro-free and, and trail-free bicycle. But there, there are other coupling effects that, um, that could contribute to self-stability of a bicycle and uh, they're in the equations and they, they affect the self-stability in principle just as much as the gyro effect, the trail effect, or this gravity effect, which I just described.